Hello everybody, my name is Kai, and welcome back to Warframe. Today we will be taking a look at what is widely considered as one of the best, or the best, bow in the entire game, the Nataruk. The Nataruk is a sentient weapon given to you by Hanhao during the New War quest. So to have this bow, you're going to have completed the New War, and you will get it for free alongside a couple other things, but this is clearly the best one that they give you. Many people refer to the Nataruk as the Archiplasmor of bows, and that is for a good reason. Alongside that, the Nataruk has a couple quirks that I will go over very quickly. Starting off with its charge mechanic. It is a bow, and if you hold down the trigger, you will pull the arrow back and charge it. But if you see that little one-third right there, that I get the dial in and the reticle turns yellow. If you fire while in that charge state and you don't fully charge the bow, you will get a perfect shot. This perfect shot does in like a lot more damage. The critical chance of critical damage, the stats are increased. So when using the Nautaruk, you want to try and be firing in that last one-third of the charge time. Alongside this, people refer to the Nataruk as the Archiplasma of Bows, as I said, because when you get that perfect shot, it has a little bit of an AoE effect. It allows you to hit all these enemies, even though I clearly was not aiming the arrow at them. The charged and perfect shot also both possess infinite body punch-through, so body for punch-through on the Nataruk is not necessary, as you can hit as many enemies as you can. It also has infinite ammo, you seemingly just generate the arrows out of thin air, sentient energy, whatever you call it, but the rest of the nuances about the Nataruk we will go over when we do our mods, which happens to be right now. If we start with the base stats of the Nataruk, you'll see that there are three firing modes, quick shot, charge shot, and perfect shot. The charge shot is when you hold down the trigger all the way, perfect, perfect shot is when you get that final one third, and the quick shot is when you just tap it in these first two thirds like this. Now. One thing to note is that the quick shot actually has a guaranteed impact proct, even though it doesn't show it here, so it can make use of things like internal bleeding, but I will showcase that later. Looking at the perfect and the charge shot, the perfect shot specifically has a base 60% critical chance that is higher than the Kuva the, the The crits that you can hit on this weapon are absolutely insane. Using just a couple mods, such as critical delay and galvanized scope, give you reds with absolutely no outside warframe buffs or anything out of the like it also has above average critical multipliers especially on the perfect shot and the damage is very very high it also has a 50 percent status chance which is just like absolutely phenomenal now looking at how we want to mod the nataruk i will start with the arcane i like to use primary deadhead the nataruk has such high damage that it's very very easy to get headshots with because of its archiplasmor style projectile so you can shoot and still get the benefits of deadhead even though you're not technically aiming for the head the charge shot and the perfect shot also do not benefit from headshots but this gives a headshot multiplier so this is just better than merciless in every way the reload's also very fast so the extra 30 percent reload speed on merciless is not that noticeable also, the Nautaruk has a default base 4V polarities, which means that you do not need to use pretty much any forma in this weapon to have it be good. The second you get it, you can throw all your mods on, and it'll perform exceptionally well. So what mods do we want to use? Well, starting with Galvanized Chamber. More multi-shot is more multi-shot. This stacks up even more, and yes, this is, this is like a necessity mod on pretty much every build. Next, I like to use Galvanized Scope. Why? Because like I said before, Nataruk, it is very, very easy to hit headshots with. This gives us even more critical chance when aiming for 12 seconds, and gives us more critical chance when we get headshot kills when aiming. Since we're going to be aiming a lot, I also like to use Bladed Rounds, because on kill, 120% critical damage when aiming for 9 seconds. This, These two mods synergize very well. If you're going to be aiming, getting more critical damage while you're aiming, who's going to say no to that? Since we are clearly building for crits on this weapon, we are going to use Critical Delay and Vital Sense. Vital Sense is just what Bladed Rounds does, but there's no condition for it. So these two together brings our multiplier on our perfect shot up to 5.3. With Bladed Rounds again, this will bring it up to around 8 or a high 7, which is fantastic. That is a ridiculously high critical multiplier for a base 180% crit chance, not even counting how much galvanized scope gives you. For base steel path, which this weapon absolutely shreds up to around the 2-3 hour mark, I recommend using just corrosive for that extra base damage. The Nautaruk does so much, so just increasing that through the use of high voltage and malignant force also brings our status chance on the perfect shot to 110%. 
which is a guaranteed status proc, a chance to proc two. And yeah, so you will always be hitting corrosive on your targets, which makes this damage absolutely insane. This last slot is a little bit subjective. We can use things such as galvanized aptitude. We have such high status chance on the perfect shot that this will just increase your base damage a lot. Is it necessary with how much damage the Nautoruk does in general? I don't really think so. Use it if you want. You can use a Bane mod. You can use Hunter Munitions. Internal Bleeding will factor in later. What I tend to use right here, though, for just the first couple hours of Steel Path is a Fire Rate mod. This is because the Nautoruk has a base charge time of 1.67. Now, I know that's for the full charge, so we can cut off about a third of this and get to around 1.2, 1.3. And the reason that I use a fire rate mod, though, is because when you look at the base fire rate, to get to that perfect shot, that's a very long time. So if we throw on a fire rate mod, such as Shred, all fire rate mods give double effect bows, brings it down to 0.83, makes that a lot more comfy to use. But if you do not want to use any fire rate mods here, and you want to go for even more damage through the use of a Bane or Hunter Munitions, because you have such high crit chance, you will always proc Slash, although I don't think this is very necessary due to, again, you being able to do so much damage paired with Corrosive, I recommend you come to your Warframe, and you slot in in your Arcane's Arcane Acceleration. Arcane Acceleration is great. You actually only really want this to be around rank 3 or 4, because 90% fire rate makes it a little too difficult, in my opinion, to consistently hit those charge shots, which is what you want to do, because that's where the majority of your damage will be coming from. I will not be using Arcane Acceleration here. This is purely because I just want to showcase just the Nautoric itself, but just know that that is an option. So in this last slot, I am going to be using Shred. Now with this build right here, you will not have a problem with pretty much any enemy. As you just saw, I have no mods on my Excalibur right now. And it is a galvanized build, so we give it a little bit to start up. But once it gets going... Even on a body shot. We're not headshotting. And you can imagine that this gun on all enemies that are not corrupted heavy gunners is going to do a stupid amount of damage. Because again, that infinite body punch through and the ability to hit headshots so easily just means that like, you know, enemies are not a problem at all. This thing just annihilates. And sometimes you get a slash proc on it that will then finish the enemies off. That is the only thing that this build could be missing is that slash so you can run hunter munitions over a mod such as bladed rounds if you want if i come back and swap out bladed rounds for hunter munitions you will also have to change your arcane since you will be getting slash kills and those do not proc primary deadhead just swap over to merciless because slash procs do proc that and then when we come back to some enemies over here let me just respawn all of them so we get the full 20. And now when I come over, again, this is a galvanized build with an arcane, so it's going to take a little bit to stack up. But you'll, you will you can see that the, the damage is still there. I'm not even using viral right now. And the slash procs will finish any enemy off. Because the Nodark just does so much damage in general that, like, the slash procs don't really need that viral to boost their damage. But if we do decide to use viral... Swapping out high voltage for rhyme rounds, giving us viral instead of corrosive, and we get the enemies back in here. Now our slash procs will do a hell of a lot of damage. And it'll be a little bit slower to build up because we're not doing such raw damage, which is why I suggest the bladed round setup with corrosive at the beginning. This one, technically the damage scales a lot higher than the corrosive one with bladed rounds, but again, the kills are not instant because the slash procs have to, they don't instantly kill. But the damage is still there, and it is still very, very strong. It just takes a little bit to kill. For the Steel Path demonstration, I will just be using Bladed Rounds and then High Voltage for Corrosive. This is just because for the first two hours, three hours of Steel Path, this will do you perfectly fine. You are going to probably need to use Viral and Slash with Hunter Munitions to scale a little bit higher. With that being the build for the Nautoruk, why don't we hop on to our boy Revenant, who I just made a video on. Go check that out if you haven't. And just for simplicity's sake, use our Nautoruk and go do some Steel Path. Here we are in Mott, in the Void on the Steel Path, my favorite place to test things for you guys. Now, I'm using a Panzer Volpophila, mainly because it can't die, but also because it spreads Viral which helps the slash procs that the uh, Nautoruk will do. 
Is it necessary? No. Use whatever companion you want, although the Panzer is probably the most useful. I will not be using Roar either. Just Mesmer skin to show off how powerful this thing is. Once we get it stacked up. Yeah, and, you know. Aren't those reds so beautiful? Just a high damage bow. Okay, that's literally what the Nodark is. Just a ridiculously high damage bow with infinite punch through. You know, if we were to use this on the Kuva survival, where you're in all those hallways, this would honestly shred even more. But I gotta keep up my tradition of going here to test things for you guys, so here we are. Even, even if I body shot, it'll still one shot everything. It just doesn't look as uh, cool because there's no red crits. But yeah, Nodark. Super, 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 super powerful. Kind of AoE because it's like an Arc of Plasmor, but also not AoE. So just, you know, one of those weapons that can still contend with the AoE meta. I mean, I know Revenant is practically invulnerable, and that's why I'm not dying here. But the Nadaruk is also killing. Very, very, very efficiently. And having absolutely no problems doing it while also giving you those juicy, juicy, juicy red grits. Yeah, we uh we got no issues here. Oh, almost ran out of Mesmer skin charges because I'm not paying attention. But uh, let's see how it fares against an Acolyte, why don't we? Okay, with Misery having just spawned, and we're chucking away at him. Where did we go? There he is. Yep, no issue. No issue at all. Obviously, if you're going against someone like I think it's Mania who has like the Turbulence Zephyr Shield or whatever, it's gonna be a little annoying because you have to get up close and personal. But besides that. Yeah, not a rook. Ridiculously good. And that is this video done, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. Honestly, one of my shorter ones, but that's because the not a rook is just so strong that it's not like it needs anything. Like, you hold down left click, don't let it charge all the way. Success. I show you the mods, it kills things, and like, yeah. So, again, thank you so much for watching, everybody. I appreciate all of you. Every single one of you are contributing so much to me. And it makes me so happy that all of you are enjoying the content. So I will continue to keep putting it out for you guys. I'm going to try to stick to this frame, then weapon, frame, then weapon type video style. The weapon videos are typically shorter and the frame videos are a little bit longer. So, yeah, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.